Hey, this is Russ, and yeah, we're back out on the road again. Yeah, I wanted to do two things today, two things to accomplish today. You might notice I'm riding the Magic Cycle Cruiser. I had a number of requests from people asking me to please redo the hill test of the Magic Cycle Cruiser and compare it directly against the new Magic Cycle Ocelot Pro. Because as I mentioned on the Ocelot Pro's review, the king of the hill was the cruiser. It was going a tad faster up that hill than, uh, than the Ocelot Pro, and people wondered why that would be since the Ocelot Pro has 10 Newton meters more torque and it's got uh, smaller wheels. It's a 20 inch by 4 inch fat tire versus the cruiser has a 26 by 4 inch fat tire. So we're going to do that test today. We're going to try it out again. Sometimes um, you know you, you make decisions of who's the king of the hill based on older tests and maybe it's time to redo that test and even the playing field out. So what they asked me to do was set both of the controllers to the same um, current limiting. So, all right, <laughs> yeah, that, that makes sense, you know, not what comes out of the box, but set it so that they both have the same exact current limiting. So we'll do that. But before we do anything further, I wanted to show you guys something too. I am testing out another product, which I wanted to recommend to you guys to take a look at. Let, let me stop here. Let me get off the, uh, the saddle here. I'm testing out two different saddles. And here it is. <laughs> now you might notice this is a different saddle that's on the cruiser here. This is made by a company called Giddy Up. And they sent me two different saddles. This one is their extra large saddle with uh, with a light in the back. I don't know if you can see that. I think it's kind of blinking. You have a couple settings here. You can, let me turn this off here first. All right, so you got a solid light, fast blinking light, and a slow blinking light, all right? And this is USB rechargeable. The other saddle they sent me is a more traditional shaped saddle. I have that sitting on the Ocelot Pro. I'll show you that one when we start doing the Ocelot Pro part of the, uh, of the uh, test. But, uh, you know, when I first got this saddle, <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh a little bit. I was like, you got to be kidding me. This thing is huge. Yeah, it's, it's not a traditional looking saddle. I says, man, I'm a big guy as it is. I don't want people laughing at me more. But after I got over myself, I said, I got to try this thing. Yeah, it feels good. <laughs> These uh, extra wide wings, if you notice, they kind of bounce around because the support actually goes up to here. The rest of this is just extra fluff. But that extra fluff makes a difference. It really does feel very comfortable. As you know, I've been using another saddle. Um, I bought a bunch of bike, uh, Bikeroo saddles. But I'll tell you that the recent purchases of the Bikeroo for the last five of them that I bought are not anywhere close to this kind of cushiness. It's kind of stiff now. I don't, I don't know what they did to it. You know, I'm not sponsored by Bikeroo, but it, I bought a lot of them because it's what I was used to. And uh, so they offered to send this to me um, with uh, no strings attached. And I said, okay, if I, if I try it and I don't like it, I'm not doing anything to talk about. And they, that's fine. So they sent it to me. Yeah, I like it. It feels really good. I may actually leave it here on the, on the, uh, on the cruiser. And then I have the other saddle on the Ocelot Pro. We'll see how that one is. Uh, I've ridden it for a little bit, so I, I know I like it. <laughs> uh, but it, it's a tr more traditional shaped saddle. But again, still has the same basic cushiness, and it's got uh, lights that light up too. But the light that lights up on that one is battery powered. It uses those, what is it, CR2032? Is that what it is, the coin batteries? I don't know how many are in there. I didn't take it apart. I did ask them if they were planning to change it to USB chargeable, because that's what this is. And they said, no, they're going to leave it because they said the coin batteries have a two-year life. And that um, with normal use, you should get about a year's worth of usage. But of course, I'm not normal. <laughs> I use my bike a lot, which means uh, even if that one year dropped down to six months, and, and uh, if I was even able to get six months of blinking light out of it, 
it might be still worth it because uh, you know if you have to plug in all the time to charge everything that's kind of a hassle too so while this does not require you to buy batteries for it because it has a rechargeable one you will have to plug it in okay now to get the cable to this bike it's kind of a ha headache so you might have to take the the saddle off i mean we all have quick releases on the on the seat post so you could always take it off that way but then you got to take it off put it on take it off put it on so maybe the battery is a better deal but something to think about okay so if you're interested in these uh, saddles go to the description of my videos i'll put uh I'll put an Amazon affiliate link there for both saddles and you can decide for yourself um, if this is a saddle that you might want to consider, okay? All right, let's get back on and let's go to the hill test. All right, so what, uh, what usually ships out of the box with the, uh, with the Cruiser, and again, remember, this is not a Cruiser Pro that I have. So I want to be pro. <laughs> I have the uh, the larger battery, the 20 amp hour battery. These are both uh, 52 volt 20 amp hour batteries. So I have the 20 amp hour battery in here and I upgraded my brakes. I have the hydraulic brakes on this. But other than that, it is the standard cruiser. Now, the 15 amp hour setting that this is originally sent with has been updated now to 22 amp hours, which means basically this to get power power is a function of voltage and um, current okay it's voltage times current equals wattage it's just basic electricity information so if you took your 52 and you multiply it by the amps that are coming to the uh, controller that's the amount of power you're going to get now both of these batteries have been charged to full 100 percent power I've also um, taken the, uh, the, the, um, the <laughs> I can't talk today. I've taken the, um, the, the tires and inflated both sets of tires to 20 pounds of pressure, which is what I normally set. So even though this is a 26 by four inch fat tire, the other one being a 20 by four inch fat tire, they both have 20 pounds of pressure, okay? I don't have really that much more stuff on this bike than, uh, I do on the other bike. I guess the only thing is the water bottle. <laughs> the water bottle is with me on this one. I, I have not put a water bottle holder or position something like that on the um, Ocelot Pro because I plan to put it in the, uh, in the same position as I did with uh, this bike, which is of course on the front basket. So I'm waiting for the front basket to show up for the Ocelot Pro and mirrors as, as well um, it got shipped to me at the same time that i put the ones on on the jaguar rundi but uh they did a, a trace for it and it says it's been delivered well it wasn't <laughs> they delivered one to me but we don't know what happened to the other one so either it got delivered to somebody else's house and they didn't give it back to me but uh yeah, I don't, I don't have the other one, so Magicycle is sending me out another one. So we just got to wait for it. That's what it boils down to. So the settings in the, in the Ocelot Pro is set up exactly, essentially, the same settings that I have uh, this, uh, this bike set up for. The delay setting, I changed it on this one to a number one. I had a number two setting delay on this bike, meaning uh, the minute you pedal or the minute you hit the throttle, it takes a little longer if you're putting on like number two versus number one. So I put it on number one. I, I did the same thing on the other bike. Um, I changed the controller setting on here, which is typically set for 15 amps. Um, I changed it to 22. That's, that means it's gonna pump more, more current uh, more current is going to flow <laughs> when you hit that throttle and uh, both have been changed to a full maximum speed of 28 miles per hour so <laughs> this is going to be an interesting test because uh going up that hill with the 28 mile per hour setting and unlocking everything on the bikes um, 
question is, is how well will these things go over the hill? Now, one thing about this hill test, all right, we're not gonna pedal it. I know on the original cruiser test that we did, uh, when I first got the cruiser, it was still set for 15 amps. And in order to get, I think we were hitting in the 14 mile per hour ranges um, back then, going over the hill. Um, <laughs> have a good day. Um, so um, they, uh, <laughs> they thought I was gonna head towards their direction, but I'm going this way. Um, I'm losing my train of thought. <laughs> this is what happens when you get old. Yeah, everything was set for whatever came out of the box the last time. And so now we're evening the playing field, putting everything exactly the same between the two models. I think really that is that's probably the fairest way to do it. Now, out of the box, the Ocelot Pro is set for 20 amps of current limiting. So uh, I moved it to 22. I figured let's max it out for both of them. <laughs> Let's do 22 on both and try to keep everything as similar as we can. Now that, that could change the whole dynamics of everything, but we'll see. It's not that hard to do this test, so I figured this is a good day to do it. Now the one thing too, as I always mention before we go up this hill, if there's somebody there, we're going to have to pull out of the test until it clears. We can't, uh, we can't go flying through <laughs> at full throttle speed if somebody's on that path. But I think what I'm going to do this time, just to be fair, I'm going to do the test twice for both bikes. So we'll go over the hill, we'll take the hill, see how it goes, find out what the lowest number is from dead stop throttling at the bridge. So we won't even start the test until we stopped at the end of the bridge and then we'll start it up. This way, it's fear for, fear for both. Because we gotta know which one's truly the king of the hill. I have to say that it has been getting colder here in this area. Every day shows uh, some, something in the 60s either low 60s or mid 60s and, and next week won't be any different really. I mean there's one or two days that hit like 70 degrees but uh, I think the cold weather is here to stay. We're not going to see anything higher anymore. So I know my time is limited as far as uh, how many more riding days we will eventually have. Now I said the same thing last year and we rode all the way until December. Because uh, last year the weather was decent enough that we had some 50 degree days or higher than 50 degree days and I was able to go out. I was cold. I'll tell you I was very cold but I was able to do it. And we did 2600 miles of riding on my first first year out with that Rad Rover 5. And since then of course things have changed dramatically. Now I'm reviewing bikes and uh, there's more bikes to play with, so. So I have more experience now than I did last year as far as uh, what different bikes can do. And um, I think a lot of times uh, you don't know what you have and you don't know what you're missing until you've tried several different type of bikes. So we have people up here. Let's just hope there's nobody there when we're doing this test. Okay, I see a golf cart up ahead of us. Thank you. So we can't do anything until that golf cart is out of the way. So we'll just move up and we'll wait a little bit, hoping that the, that golf cart moves out of the way. I don't know why it's even on the, on the path where it's heading, but it's heading in the same direction we are. Okay, it's some type of service truck. It's 
So we're gonna wait until it gets over this thing. All right, so I'm gonna stop here. I can smell all the gas fumes from it. <laughs> We're just gonna wait till that truck is well over that top and I'm hoping it goes past it and doesn't stop where we're trying to go. We'll give it a little bit of time. Okay, here we go. All right, so I'm throttling up 100% now. Going up over the hill, there is one rider. So let's see how fast this goes up. Doing about 20.6. Dropping, dropping, dropping. And from what I can see, 14, 13.7, 13.3. I'm seeing about 13.3. Okay, let's head back. We're gonna do this one more time. I see that truck over there too. 13.3 it took me to get up to the top of the hill. Then the uh, speed started to change, started to go back up again. So what was 14 before, 14 something, I don't recall, is not the case anymore. I think from, uh, from what I saw, uh, we have these people walking, we're gonna have to wait until they're done. Um, from what I saw, Um, I may have been pedaling at the time when it hit 14 as well. So obviously that would help the motor. That wouldn't be a fair number to use. We're gonna stay here again. I'm waiting until these people are done and through the top of that hill. So that's gonna take a little while. So I will uh, <laughs> edit, edit the weight out and then we'll start up again. All right, let's give it a try. I'm throttling up full blast. We are hitting 20.4, 20.6. We're going up the hill. 18, 17.6, 16.5, 16.2. 14.6, 13.3, 13.0, 13 13.0 is our lowest number. All right, <laughs> that's all we needed to know. What was 14, I believe in the past, could have been 14 from slight pedaling in addition to putting the, uh, the throttle on. So based on this, even if I didn't redo the other Ocelot Pro, the Ocelot Pro is the winner. I think that was like 13.3, if I'm not mistaken. And if this is doing 13, this is not the, the winner. We'll confirm it. We'll redo the Ocelot Pro because we moved it from 20 amp hours to a 22 amp hour, which is what this is set for as well. Everything is essentially set exactly the same between the two bikes at this point. So yeah. The Ocelot Pro is likely to be the winner, which we all kind of expected. So this is why people said we got to redo that test because it didn't seem to make a lot of sense that one that had 96 Newton meters of torque was losing out to one that only has 86, which is this bike. So I'm gonna return this bike back home, pick up the Ocelot Pro, show you the other saddle, all right? And then also do the test again. Well, what do you guys think? I'm kind of surprised, but not really. Um, I, I think I was more surprised that, uh, that the Ocelot Pro didn't go over 14, but as I reviewed my own um, review, um, when we claimed over 14, I was pedaling slightly in addition to uh, throttling. I thought I had throttled that entire time, but I didn't. So uh, that could explain why we were getting 14 something 
in number um, the last time we did this test on camera. Now I've, I've done this test before off camera um, just with the throttle only and I could swear that it was over 14. It could just be a luck of the draw of the day or maybe I weigh a little bit more now. <laughs> I did gain a little bit of weight, let's, let's say that. I did gain a little bit of weight since that uh, test was done, so it's possible. <laughs> I mean, everything's a factor, right? Weight is a factor. <laughs> this is a heavier bike, I believe. Um, yeah, maybe not. I think they are similar. Yeah, we'll have to check. I mean, it may be a difference of a pound or two or something. So, uh, so it's uh, it's gonna be interesting. But like I said, the Ocelot Pro review was done just last week uh, from me, and um, it was doing over uh, over 13 point something. I think 13.3, 13.4, or something like that. We'll confirm it again. We'll make sure. All right, I'm just gonna go pick up the bike, come back, talk to you guys in a bit. All right, let me show you the, uh, the other saddle. Again, Giddy Up has a couple of different models. This saddle is about a dollar less expensive than the other saddle, all right? Essentially, it's very similar in the sense. Um, they both have a lot of cush to them. There's blinking lights. Like I said, this one is battery powered. So um, it uses the CR2032 batteries. I don't know how many it's in there. I haven't opened it up. I would imagine one or two at least. So this one has a cutout on the top here for air ventilation. Yeah, it's your personal preference, whatever you like. Both of them use elastomers. It's kind of like rubber springs. They're not really springs. But uh, yeah, <laughs> check them out on the Amazon links. I have those links on the uh, descriptions. All right. How you doing? Thank you, you too. All right. So we're gonna take this to the uh, to the hill, try it out, see how it does. All right, as we approach the hill, we're gonna stop uh, at the end of the bridge here, and then we'll throttle up 100%. And um, if again, if anybody's there, we'll have to pull out of the test. But um, we'll do it twice. We'll see how well it does. So we'll do the exact same thing here. We'll just stop at the end of this bridge. All right, here we go. So this full throttle going on in the Ocelot Pro. This is set for 22 amps current limiting. So we have someone there, hopefully they see us, so I don't have to slow down. Doing 20.6. 19, 18, 17.4, 15.4, 14.4, 13.3, 13.3. That's pretty much what we said last time. <laughs> So yeah, it's uh, pretty much consistent. We'll do it one more time though. I do see another person. So we may have to wait a while to redo this test again. But 13.3, yeah, that's pretty much the same. That puts it as king of the hill by about 0.3 miles per hour over the cruiser. We'll do it one more time. We'll see if uh, if it maintains 13.3 or not. All right, let's give it a second run. From the end of the bridge, here we go. Full throttle. Yep, 
Yeah, we do see that other person there, but I think they'll be able to see us, so we should be fine. All right, 20.4, we're dropping. 17.1, 16 16.5, 15 15.5, 14.5, 13.4, 13.4. <laughs> so 13.4, that pretty much confirms that uh, the lowest number is 13.3. The Ocelot Pro is the king of the hill. Yeah, with everything equal, setting both the cruiser and the Ocelot Pro had the exact same settings of everything in the advanced functions. The, uh, the Ocelot Pro is the winner. That's a little bit more like it, huh? <laughs> okay, this thing only beat it out by 0.3 miles per hour. I would say that um, both uh, the Cruiser and this uh, Ocelot Pro very similar okay now the amount of torque that's improved with this Ocelot Pro it goes from 86 Newton meters to 96 Newton meters so uh, the winning is 0.3 miles per hour faster Which I guess in a sense would make sense. I mean, it shouldn't be dramatically faster because uh, the two do have very similar type of uh, torques. Weight of the two models is relatively similar too. The only real difference is the, uh, the wheel size. Uh, the wheel size on the Ocelot Pro being a 20 inch by four inch fat tire versus the Cruiser at 26 inch by four inch fat tire. In general, that smaller tire should have more torque. Torqueability. <laughs> so there you have it. It's proof that the uh, that the uh, higher torque on this uh, Ocelot Pro makes it the winner. Not by much, <laughs> but, it, but it makes it the winner. So neither one of them hit 14. Neither one of them did. Now, we saw too that the, um, I think the Blackbird, where was that in? That was in the 12 point something ranges, I believe. Um, so still about a second or so slower than, than the Magicycles. Um, still respectable. And um, what was it, the Van Powers. I'm gonna have to check the Van Powers to see what number it was because it also has a 96 newton meter rating it's a buffang motor in there and um, and um, i believe it was in the 13 ranges too i'm going to check my uh check my review see what that van powers came out at i'll put a report to see if the van powers is king of the hill or not because I think uh, it's up there as well. I don't know, one thing with the van powers that I thought was uh, interesting is that um, it's kind of a minimalist type of approach to an e-bike. Uh, some have said, well, that thing, you know, it's like almost $2,000, but doesn't have uh, hydraulic brakes. And so, you know what they put the money into? They stuck it all into, into how they build that frame and um, the motor that's in there doesn't have any fenders. Yeah, that's true, it doesn't have the fenders. <laughs> All right, I wanna make sure they're both stopping. Um, yeah, if you look at the Van Powers frame, you can't even see the welds. Yeah, on most of these bikes, including the Magicycle, you can see the welds, and these are good welding on here. But on the van power, it's totally smooth. You can't see the welds. It's gotta take some effort to do that. It's a little more refined in terms of its frame, that's that sense. But um, yeah, it would be nice if it had hydraulic brakes. Yeah, that's for sure. If it had the hydraulic brakes and had the fenders, it, it's pretty much got, you know, 
everything you would probably want <laughs> in a bike. It's got power and everything. And But yeah, we'll check. Uh, I'll put a, a graphic up to let you know how the van powers did in comparison to these two models. But specifically, people were more interested in how did, um, how did the Magic Cycles do against each other. Yeah, we might as well throw the other one in the mix because that one has a lot of power. And that's why I was kind of impressed with that being a new company. Uh, well, new to me. I don't know how long they've actually been in business. <laughs> but most of these companies are still relatively new. I mean, nobody's actually been a long time. Magic Cycle's only been like a year. They're, they, they haven't been around forever either, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> But they've, they've gathered a big name for themselves <laughs> over that year. Anyway, <laughs> let me know what you think. If you like this type of uh, comparison review, um, it takes a little bit more effort to do it, but yeah, I, I was curious myself why those numbers were the way they were. And uh, after redoing this test and evening out the playing field, giving uh, both machines the same numbers as far as uh, current limiting and both set at 28 miles per hour maximum speeds, which I did on, on the original cruiser test as well, but now we know. <laughs> Anyways, if you liked the video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button. Hit the little bell notification if you want to make sure you don't miss anything. But I'll tell you, the Russ is Right videos usually come out at 7 a.m. in the morning, six days a week, every day except for Sundays. Um, it may change a little bit during the winter months. We may have a little bit less, but uh, we'll see. I'll talk to you guys next time.